It's time to babble the fuck on. It's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Saturday night in Burbank, ladies and gentlemen. So let's, yes. So let's interrupt me. <laughs> uh, so let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garner. Hey! Aren't you lovely? Let me tell you something, man. We're a few shy of a sellout tonight, but it feels like a fucking sellout crowd. We don't need those other fuckers. <laughs> Fuck those people. Yeah. Yeah, these fuckers would have been those fuckers if they didn't show up. Yeah, but they did show up, so they're not those fuckers. Good point. They Fuck braved the rain, too. Yes. These they braved the rain fuckers. to come out here. You know what, man? This, this is going to be a problem night. all night. You want to switch? <laughs> Fixed it. Hey! Everything's coming up fucking Millhouse, man. It really is. This felt fucking fantastic. Um, this is this could be the fucking greatest show we ever did. I think you're right. <laughs> that kind of vibe in the air. Or oh fuck, here we go. <laughs> um, hey, can I tell you a fucking quick story? I would love that. This happened uh, last week, and it, it was I was sitting home, I was writing. Uh, there was a doorbell ring. Right. Went to answer the door, and our, we got this big door you can't, there's no people or anything, you got to open it to see what's going on outside. I opened it to a Los Angeles Police Department officer. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> They've responded to all my emails and phone calls. It's about goddamn time. I was, I was sitting there like, you know, you got a few seconds before, while you're having an exchange that inside you're like, what the fuck have I done? And what is this? And oh God. Flush all the drugs. <laughs> and I was like, uh, hi. And he was like, uh, hi. Did your I, voice crack like that? It when did. You it did. I'm like, hi. A, I'm a 53 year old man. And I'm still afraid of the police. Oh, we all are. Let me change that. I'm a 53-year-old white man, and I'm still afraid <laughs> of the police. And it's all predicated on a childhood yes. like, where like, you knew every police officer's name in town, and you knew the ones that were like, oh, he goes after the kids and stuff like right. that. Right. Not after them, but you know. <laughs> I understand. I know what you're saying, yeah. But it's still, like, I still respond in the same way. That's why whenever I watch, like, fucking Law & Order... And the cops go to talk to somebody. They're like, I ain't got to say shit. I'm like, what? Who are those people? Oh, my God. You're insane. And I was like, well, that's drama, I guess. But, like, I, I, I'm so fucking scared. So I say, hi. And he goes, uh, we noticed that you have cameras on your house. Oh. And I was like, I do. And he goes, uh, a woman, an older woman has gone lost in the neighborhood. Can we look at your cameras to see if she passed by? And I was like, oh, my God. I've I've been watching I've been rewatching the entire series of the closer. So I know exactly what you need, man. Yeah. Like fucking this is like Brenda Lee Johnson time. Holy shit, man. You need to scan through the security. And he's like, Yeah, have you got that? And I said, like, I got it on my phone. So I pull it up on my phone and shit. And uh, I pull up in that window and I'm like, I don't know how to do it. And then the other guy goes, I think you press this thing here. And I press that. And it takes me back to this clip. And he's like, now I just scrub through it. And you should be able to find it. And I start scrubbing, but it won't catch up and shit like that. And mm. it's like waiting for a minute and a minute and stuff. And then the cop who was telling me how to scrub and whatnot, he looks at me and goes, hey, man, you're Kevin Smith. <laughs> and then the other cop goes, of course he's fucking Kevin Smith. <laughs> Well, you just noticed that now? You noticed that when he opened the door? These guys weren't detectives, were they? <laughs> <laughs> if they were, I'm worried. <laughs> Powers of observation. I was like, uh, hey, uh, this ain't working on my phone. Why don't you guys just uh, come into my office? In my office, there's like a back room, and it's got all security shit in it. We could probably scrub through there because it's connected right into the hard line and stuff. And they're like, all right. And so they come in. And the whole time I'm chit-chatting with him about the closer. <laughs> um, 
I was like, man, that's an amazing show. And both of these cops, dude, let me tell you something. You want to feel fucking old? Call an LAPD officer. They were like 25, 26. Yeah. Total fucking kids and shit. So they're like, I've never seen The Closer. And I'm like, well, it's damn good and shit. <laughs> that's when I noticed like they're wearing, you know, the fucking cameras. The body cams. And I'm like, I'm giving the worst show of my life. <laughs> And so I turn it up, because now I know there's a camera on. And I'm like, naturally, hey, officers, do you want to come this way? <laughs> so they're coming into the office, and I'm opening up the laptop and trying to, like, scrub through it and shit like that. And one of the uh, officers, you know, they got the fucking <laughs> walkie-talkies, like, right here and shit. Right. One of the guys, <laughs> and he's like, I don't know what I'm about. And the guy goes, oh, man, he's going, there's a shooting right now in Hollywood. And I was like, get out of here. And then all of a sudden, from his chest, you hear, <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ, did we just hear a fucking shooting? He goes, no, that's my ringtone. <laughs> he goes, it's the gunshots from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, man. He's like, realistic, right? You said, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> oh my God, it was so scary. Um, as it turned out, we stood there together for 45 fucking minutes, and I couldn't get the security shit to work. Could not fucking scan it. Well, them. I know whose house I'm going to rob now. Totally. <laughs> totally. Man, I got to call ADT and be like, uh, I have the cops here, and thank God I had nothing but the closer to talk about, because <laughs> now I can't be the closer, because I couldn't find my video. <laughs> couldn't fucking help. Like, I'm, like that, they would have cut that scene out of the closer. <laughs> they would have. Like, fucking useless and shit. Anyway, you know, good guys, the cops. <laughs> really, All right, really sweet. back to blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Young, too. That was a, that really... Here's the thing I've found, and I'm a few years older than you. I don't know if you're aware or not. How old are you? I'm older than you. That's all you need to know. <laughs> but like every... fucking like a Hollywood queen, older than you. Just don't... <laughs> Don't, don't ask. Yes. Don't, never ask. No. Yeah, I'm Truman Capote all of a sudden. <laughs> well, like Norma Desmond I'm or something. I'm older like than you. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Didn't think I'd be pulling out my Truman Capote. That was pretty good. That much. Pretty good. Um, I was about to rip out my Norma Desmond and shit. It's going to be like... Um, and then I realized I was going for Marlena Dietrich and said, who was the one that was like, I want to be alone? Greta Garbo. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was wrong across the fucking board. You were. But thanks for playing. We have some party gifts <laughs> for you. Never use me as your phone a friend. Uh, you, will, you will learn as the years progress that everybody starts to look ridiculously young as compared to you. Like people you used to respect and idolize and stuff. I recently went to the Philadelphia Eagles game. They are playing the, uh, the Rams out here last season. Mm. And a friend hooked us up with some field level access. And so I got to meet a couple of the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm a huge Eagles fan. And as they approached me to say hello, I was like, you're 12! <laughs> How, where are your parents? Do they know what kind of danger you put yourself in every Sunday? I was stunned, and it's like, oh my God, I'm old and everyone else stays the same age. And we're, and we're at that age where like fucking, we, we get hurt. <laughs> yeah. That's why I didn't play that day. <laughs> Stay off the I field. had my uniform. I was ready to step on, but it ain't just us, man. Dr. Josh Roush got fucking hurt. Oh, and yeah. He's younger than us. Josh, how old are you? 39. Yeah. Fucking how old's your knee? <laughs> Much older. Much older, yeah. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I was playing on stage with Empire, and uh, my old man knee gave out. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I fell to my death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was, he was punking out, man. He was on stage playing bass. Yeah. I saw the video. And he's like, backing up, like doing that rock and roll thing. And then right. knee just came on. He just hit the ground. Eight total shit. Yeah. Are you serious? That's so <laughs> punk, isn't it? To, I finished you know, the song punk, on my You know what's punk is? He kept playing once he That's hit the ground. That's what I'm saying. Thank like, you. fucking you, you bust it, and you're just like, don't give a shit. Na, 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 na. Nobody's listening anyway. <laughs> Wow, the guy's hurt. Dude, <laughs> kick him when he's down, literally. <laughs> I think nobody. I, I can't the, defend myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think the point was nobody's listening because they're like, "Look at his fucking knee." Oh, I see. Yeah, good point. 
Um, what do you What do you do for that sort of thing? I uh, just walk it off or <laughs> sit it off. Honestly. Rub some dirt on it. Oh my God, man! It's just like fucking little league, man. L- nothing changes. I've just been drinking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I found that's the answer to everything, Josh. I True. think you won't be disappointed with the outcome. You won't feel any better, but you won't give a fuck. Truth. Maybe this is the drinking night, man, for me. Yes. What? <laughs> Do they have a frou-frou drink of some sort? Something with, like, f- you know... Can we get a Sunny D in rum, please? For <laughs> <laughs> fucking Junior over here. I Fuck you, that sounds delicious. <laughs> Less, you know, go light on the run, but that feels <laughs> yeah, pretty sure, yeah. good. And get him a junior cop badge, too, so he can still pretend he's the closer. <laughs> um, no, I want to join you and Josh. Let's, let me get, get one of them silly drinks. <laughs> Who are you? It's Saturday night in Burbank. Let's this all started at Comic-Con, didn't it? This whole thing about you yeah. starting to have cocktails from time to time. Yeah. I like it. I like this side of you. Well, you just sounded like a commercial when you're like, sometimes it's the only thing that helps. <laughs> I, I mean, a sad commercial, I but like a fucking a PSA, <laughs> but a commercial nonetheless. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll have a drink. That reminds me of like when I was uh, working at Quick Stop years ago, years ago before we even made the fucking that movie. So I'm working at the store and it was in the middle of the Nor'easter, uh, Nor'easter of 92. And it's like the worst fucking weather in the world, the town of Highlands that I grew up in was completely flooded and shit. I had to wade out of the town in fucking waders, get to the highway, to walk down the highway, go to Quick Stop, and open the fucking store. Mm. Because I was like, there's nothing to do. I couldn't just stay in Highlands. The house was flooded. They were evacuating people and stuff. So I was like, fuck it, I'll go to work. Because they were on dry land. So I got to Quick Stop, bone, you know, fucking dry, like wet from the weather, but no f- flooding or anything like that. Open the fucking shutter, turn on the light. Now, I wasn't there 30 seconds before somebody's like, do you have cigarettes? <laughs> and I was like, of course. And they came in, sold them cigarettes. And for the next fucking five hours, in the worst weather in the world, people came for cigarettes. Yeah. And I was like, cigarettes must be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you'll come out and shit like this, why the fuck am I not smoking cigarettes? It's comfort food. I, I smoked my first cigarette that day. Yeah. And I was like, this is fucking terrible. And then I was like, but I should try the next <laughs> one. And, and then I smoked for like the next 15 years or something like that. Imagine if you sold cocaine. <laughs> You would have been so busy that day. (laughs) This must be amazing. (laughs) They're right. (laughs) I miss my cocaine days. They were good. Well, how? Every time I talk about it, I get a little sad. Can you? Why? Why do you? Why? Just out of curiosity, why do you miss them? Why do I miss them? Yeah. The cocaine days? Yeah. yeah. Because they were awesome. That's why. No, no, but. Why, why are they still doing it? Yeah, why are they a thing of the thank past? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, cocaine fans. <laughs> the, biggest, the biggest round of applause all night was for cocaine. Yeah, fuck your comedy, the <laughs> idea of coke. Give me some blow. Um, why, why wouldn't you do it now? Is too old? I think that you reach a certain age where your heart will explode if you, <laughs> if you, if you do it so, the way uh, I did it. I only really know one way to do it, baby. I'm a, uh, I'm a heart attack guy, so it's off the table for me. But yeah, and I'm uh, heading down that road, I'm sure. So I probably don't want to, you know, I don't want to speed up. What I'm in the, the slow lane. What's the most coke you ever did, like in a period of time? Oh that... boy. <laughs> the, the night that I'm thinking of, we did. I didn't really keep track. That's how much I did. There was just it was a, it was an endless supply and I just did as much as I could. It was it was about 36 hours. But how much of that was sniffing cocaine? <laughs> and how much of it was sleeping? No, the th- that's what I'm saying. There was no sleeping. They would, when when you do that much cocaine, <laughs> there's no sleeping. It's just more cocaine and cigarettes and uh, ooh, what'd you get him? Oh, what'd you get him? A what? A ragamuffin. What's in a ragamuffin? Yeah. Uh, strawberry puree, rum, cocaine. Pasta, and, and cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> strawberry it, puree, rum, and cocaine. Is it uh, vegan? There's no meat in this, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Let's raise our glasses, kids. 
To Ralph's. Raise your fucking glass. All right, Jesus Christ. To You're Ralph's, a mean drunk. You haven't even had any yet. Uh, to Ralph's friend, alcohol. Yes. Oh, yeah. As Homer Simpson says, to alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like I could light my breath on fire. Too much rum? That was in there? That's what they said, yeah. It's vodka. Is it vodka? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> you could defend yourself just fine from there. Um, oh my God, that hit too strong for you. We'll get you something else. I, I did. <laughs> we'll get you something else. I tried to stir it. Holy shit. Let's get him a Long Island iced tea. Can we do one of those? Drink it faster. Yeah. That was the same thing happened on cocaine night. That was the problem. <laughs> Snort it faster. Yeah. I'm ready. You ready to do a show? Fuck yes. All right, let's get to it. Let's it's kick so things. weird that it's like it goes right to your face, doesn't it? Is that where you feel it? Do you feel it in your face? <laughs> Alcohol? Yeah. I feel it in my belly first. Is that right? It's like a warmth in my belly. But and it don't it, go to it, your face? Then it just spreads out all over my body. What about your face? <laughs> yeah, face. <laughs> all right. We're not going to move on until I say face. So, yes, face. Oh, so much face, Kevin. <laughs> all the face. We're going to kick things off the way we ordinarily do, talking to some folks in the audience who have come from particularly long distances or celebrating special occasions. It's called the Shout Outs. It's a shout out with Kevin and Brown, so get your cock out. Yeah. Get your cock out. You're right, it helps. Yeah, it does. We should just dip the microphone in vodka. Yes. Just put that in your mouth. Uh, Jenny Aguilar Mickelson. Hi, Jen. How Jenny. are you? Uh, I just had the privilege of visiting Red Bank, New Jersey for Ooh. the first time a what? few weeks ago. A few oh, weeks ago? The, yeah, my bad. Yes, it's getting ahead of shit, man. I was like, Spoilers. She was a finalist in the Smodcastle 37-hour film challenge. You went to that. Ernie and Steven at uh, Smod Castle put on the 37-hour film challenge. And they had, like, well over 100 people, I think, 155 entries and stuff. They're going to keep doing it. Now. And the premise was you had 37 hours. Ask the artist. The premise was you had 37 hours from making a movie from start to finish, from, from writing the script until you were, you were finished with it. Huh. That sounds like a challenge. Yeah. 37 hour film yeah. challenge. Yeah. Um, it was so cool not only to make it my first short film festival with my first film, but at Smod Castle, no less. I'm now inspired to direct my first full feature. Yeah. Another storyteller. Good. Call me. Call me. I need to be cast in some stuff. Yeah. Can Sexy Kevin give me some advice on how to be a great director like my inspiration, Kevin Smith? <laughs> well, first of all, get better inspiration. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> aim higher. Uh, proud Garmy member and Kevin Smith Club member as well, Jenny. All right, Sexy Kevin, give her some advice on how to be a director. Oh, Jen. What you want to do is hire someone cheap and never give him dialogue. <laughs> Then Son give him bitch. all the dialogue, but only impressions. <laughs> then start writing checks, because you're going to be rich, bitch. Yeah. Good luck, Jen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Definitely hire Ralph. And if Ralph, if Ralph does a day, I'll do a day. All right. Yeah. If you make a movie, we'll be in it. How about that? All right. 
That goes for all of you. <laughs> Been We'd doing be a busy lot, for like a lot fucking of ten films, years and shit. <laughs> uh, Dan Ruiz, where's Dan? Which set? Of course, Dan. Dan. Front, front row center Excellent as always. Shirt. Dan has his own running bit. We're just gonna keep going with because I love it. Uh, hi guys, I'd like to hear what Dudley Moore would sound like singing "They're Coming to Take Me Away." Ha ha. <laughs> this is uh, an ongoing thing that just tickles me for no end. So if no one else like it, it'll be over in about a minute. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Dudley Moore, Arthur Bach himself from the movie Arthur, singing, They're Coming to Take Me Away. Ha ha, he he, ho ho. Josh? Remember when you ran away and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I got berserk? Ha! They left me anyhow and then the days got worse and worse and I see I've gone completely out of my mind. I... They're coming to take me away. Oh, they're coming to take me away. Oh, yeah. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. They're coming to take me away. <laughs> there you go. We also get emails from all around the world. Josh? Ain't no drag. Garvin's got an email back. Featuring Kevin's reaction. That's right. <laughs> Seth Kano writes in, uh, Ralph, Kevin, Josh. Two-star Garmy member writing in, I recently celebrated my brother's wedding. I was wondering if the Germans could give my brother Joel and his wife Ramey some advice on how to maintain a long and happy marriage. The Germans giving advice on how to maintain a long and happy marriage. His wife's name is Ramey? His uh, brother's name is Joel. His wife's name is Ramey. Ram Ramey? Ramey. Like Sam Ramey? Ramey. Ray. A drop of golden sun. Yes. Me, a name, name I call myself. myself. <laughs> ah, a long, long way to run. Yes, so. Everybody's. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> so tea, a drink with jam and bread. That will bring us back to dough. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right. Get, oh, we're fucking. We're getting slapped with an injunction now. <laughs> By singing Nazi kids? I think you're fine. They were running from the Nazis. I don't know. <laughs> History, you know, is told by the winners, so fucking. <laughs> and we beat the Nazis. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Kevin's Conspiracy Corner. <laughs> on the, a new segment on the show. Oh, this has shown me so many truths. <laughs> I now understand so much better. <laughs> Alcohol is it's all the fucked. Way. You're all fucked. <laughs> We're all fucked. <laughs> Pass the rum. <laughs> oh, sure, the Germans could give these kids some advice on a long and happy marriage. There's Batman and Robin and the Ralph Smith and Potsy. There's Rudiger and Klaus. They're Germans, not Nazis. Yeah, yeah, we are not Nazis. No, no, no. There no such thing as Nazis. <laughs> there were. One day, uh, then those kids got away from us, the singing kids. <laughs> yeah, they went over the Alps. Yes, that was the Nazis. <laughs> Dirty Nazi kids. Nine. They were Austrian kids who got away from us. What was the difference? <laughs> Rolf, he was the good one who stayed behind with the hat. You know that movie well. Yeah. <laughs> Who, Ralph is the... I am 16, going on 17. Oh. He's the Nazi youth who's going after Liesl. That's right. That whole song is sung, like half of it's sung by a Nazi. Yes! <laughs> and like, you know, fucking, the, you know, the girl, you know, they get away and shit, so they're in the clear. But he was flat out. He was a true believer. Youth. Still had a lovely voice. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Gotta Shame. give them that. Yeah. Thing about the Nazis, they sing like a bird. 
I was blown in Dusseldorf and that is why they call me Rome. Springtime for <laughs> Hitler and Germany. <laughs> See, man, when we don't sell out, it's all show tunes. <laughs> yeah. It's a cabaret act. All <laughs> yeah, we're like, fuck. Where were we? Oh, yes. Yeah. yes here we were. Auf Wiedersehen. No, no. Nein. Auf Wiedersehen. Oh. Nein. No, a long, happy marriage. Yeah. Yes. Here's what you do, Joel. Joel. Here's what you do. You invade Raimi every night. Invade her with your panzer tank. You take the Luftwaffe and attack from the air as well. And then... You will have her, but you will dominate her forever. So romantic. <laughs> Thank you. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> uh, Craig McFarland from Springfield, Illinois writes in. If all goes well today, April 13th, I'll be engaged by the time your show hits the stage of Flappers. Let's hope it goes well or else I'll send a quick abort email. But he didn't, so I think it went well. My fiance Zoe is a wonderful middle school choir teacher doing the Lord's work. April 13th is also her birthday. See, that's smart. He, he proposed on her birthday. He'll never forget the day he proposed to her. Thinking. No. Yeah. I did that with my fiance. Did you really? Yeah. Proposed on her birthday. Alcohol is not always the answer to everything. <laughs> That's a pretty strong strategy right yeah, there. Never yeah. forget. Yeah. yeah. She has never heard of Hollywood Babylon, and she will be completely confused by all this. <laughs> but could David Bowie offer her a double-shot birthday engagement shout-out? Craig McFarland, Springfield, Illinois. Certainly he could do that for you. Craig, here we go. Happy birthday to you, Zoe. Happy birthday to you, Zoe. You're also getting married to Craig, who's very smart. He proposed to you on your birthday, so he'll never forget when he did it. Happy birthday to you, Zoe. Now you'll always remember that day. Happy birthday to oh, Come on. The head, the hair. <laughs> Folks send us emails all the time about fucked up town names, and uh, we never thought of a name for this segment, so we call it Your Town's Got a Fucked Up Name. This is from Heath from South Central Pennsylvania. He said, not only is this a fucked up town name, but it's a fucked up sign with two fucked up town names. They knew exactly what they were doing when they put this thing up, he claims. Let's take a look at the sign and we'll see. <laughs> Need this more Hancocks. The sentiment we all agree with. I think we could. They put it right there on the sign. We, we all need more Hancock, I think, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> she really liked that one man. <laughs> this may be the best show we've I ever done I think so yes. I think so I think it's just loose enough no you know to they said? let in less people yeah less people more <laughs> handcuffs that's right uh, we also get emails from folks who find things that are supposed to be for kids, but when you look at them, you realize they're inappropriate toys. Not appropriate for girls, not appropriate for boys. What the fuck is that? Inappropriate toys. Mike Arbolino from Orlando, Florida. He puts in parentheses, don't hold that against me, which I thought was cute. Uh, he said... Had to send this in to you guys because I just got done cleaning up the coffee I spit all over myself. When I heard my son watching kid shows on YouTube, I heard him singing this tune at the top of his voice. He thinks this song, perhaps, although it's meant for kids, is not necessarily appropriate. Let's take a listen. I love little pussy, her coat is so warm. If I don't hurt her, she'll do me no harm So I'll not pull her tail nor drive her away But Pussy and I very gently will play 
Pussy and I very gently will play. I love little pussy. I love little pussy. It's a sentiment I think we all share, I guess. On Need some more Hancock. I love little <laughs> I love pussy. Little pussy. You take nothing else away from tonight's show. <laughs> I just wonder why the cartoon was a little girl and it was the voice of a clearly year old man. Clearly a man. Yes, clearly. I was wondering that myself. So, yeah. I love little pussy. I love little Puss pussy. With pussy, I will play. <laughs> Will Hello, I? Barbara. It's me, Mary. Is your mom home? Let's play with your little pussy. Gently, though. Gently. <laughs> <laughs> I think you nailed it. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Let's go home. All right. It's a wrap. Dan Ruiz. God damn it, Dan. You're a one-man content factory. <laughs> He sent this in. We haven't done this for a while because I thought I made my point and we started being inundated with these types of toys and I thought, okay, we can move on. But, but the playing with shit thing with children. It's huge. It's, not, it's too big. It's gone too far. Everybody poops. But now we're, now we're getting into animals and we're, we're reducing them to just to their basest, most disgusting instincts. Watch the commercial for this toy. Monkey see, monkey poo. The hilarious game of poo flinging fun. Squeeze out poo. Come on! Uh -huh. Knock over bunches. <laughs> to earn bananas and move up the tree. Red. Come on! Uh -huh. Fling! No, not the mouth! A perfect hit. First one of the top wins. With monkey see, monkey poo. Monkey see, monkey poo. Where the monkey <laughs> literally shits into its own hand and then throws the shit to win the game. There was life. There was monopoly. <laughs> there was uh, trivial pursuit. Yeah. Yahtzee. Yeah. Now this has monkey entered see, the path. Monkey poo. Oh my God. The fact that you get to make the monkey shit. And then you take that shit, roll it up. You don't even. The monkey shits in his own hand, and then you hit the monkey's tail, and the monkey just angrily flings his shit. I think my version's hotter. <laughs> That's an amazing game. I man. hate everything about that. I, I would be proud to put Jay and Silent Bob's <laughs> Monkey See, Monkey Do stickers all over that. Monkey see, monkey snooch. <laughs> we had a game called Jane Silent Bob Smell My Finger. <laughs> this would be a step up. <laughs> Available where all fine games are sold. And Phil from Dartford in uh, UK, in England. Uh, recent day off, I went to those one... Um, those out-of-town stores that sell everything, and boy, do they sell everything. This is for kids, and of course, kids love the magic of nature and growing things on their own. So get this for your love. Here's, uh, here's the toy he found. <laughs> Grow your own hairy beaver. <laughs> I guess it's like a chia pet with the grass grows out of the beaver's head, so you can have your own hairy beaver. There's a theme tonight, man. Grow your own hairy beaver. I love your little pussy. And let me throw some shit at you. <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> Folks, we have to say goodbye to some people who left us this week, but Ooh. they leave behind bodies of work and sometimes bodies. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Telling it like it is. Putting it on Front Street. Ralph Garman. He ain't fucking pussyfooting around death. It's time for the Tits and Sound Stiffs. And now, another edition of... Tinsel Sound Stiffs. They will be missed. Some of them will. <laughs> Starting off with Eleanor Coppola has passed away at the age yeah. of 87 years old. So sad. For those who don't know, she was uh, Francis Ford Coppola's longtime wife. 
In fact, they met on set in 1962. She was working as an assistant art director on his very first motion picture, Dementia 13. For Roger and, Corman. Yeah, right? Yeah. And they met on the set, and they started dating, and shortly thereafter, they got married in Vegas and had their first baby, and they had been together ever since to this, this week. Um, she was an enormous support to Francis and was a true partner in everything that he did. And a filmmaker, an honored filmmaker Great in filmmaker. her own right. If you've ever seen the documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now called Heart of Darkness, A Filmmaker's Apocalypse, it's mm -hmm. a brilliant behind-the-scenes look at not only the making of that particular film, but just the inner workings of a, a, a director who loses his mind a little bit with his passion for a project. I paid to see that movie at the Film Forum back in like the early, early 90s. It's one of the great when documentaries about out. movie making of all time. Fantastic. She yeah. rolled the camera on the whole experience while everything was breaking down. And yeah. It's a fascinating study in filmmaking. But Here, yeah, it's a well-made film. She it, was, she yeah. was uh, you know, some people are like, oh, she's my muse. She was his equal. Yeah. They were filmmaker. true partners. They were true partners, yeah. Uh, here's a little scene from that documentary that I mentioned where she is talking about what she witnessed watching her husband break down while the making of Apocalypse Now was going on. Well, he did, uh, at one point, he fainted. He kind of, he had a collapse, and uh, he told me that he could see himself going down a dark tunnel, and he didn't know if he was dying or leaving this reality or what was happening to him. But he'd gone to the threshold, maybe, of his um, sanity or something. It was scary, but also kind of exhilarating, or thrilling that he would uh, take such risks with himself and his uh, experience to uh, go that far. And I think this film was all about risking, risking your money, risking your... Uh, um, Sanity, risking your, how far you can press your family members. I mean, everything that he did, he went to the extremes to test those fringe regions and then come back. Fascinating. Yeah. And how cool of her to say, yeah, he almost died, but it was really kind of cool because yeah. he was he was really into making this movie. You could tell like she was uh, like a fan of the craft before she met him. They met on Dementia 13. Right. So like while she was she like, oh my it. God, he went to a dark place. She was like, it's pretty metal. <laughs> yeah. That was really sweet. God, that makes me feel old. The last time I watched that was probably before my entire career began. Wow. Um, but it's still, I remember like... I remember that entire thing. Um, how old was she? She was 87, I believe. Yeah, 87 years old. No and cause of death, but uh, he's uh, his his film is yeah. uh, going to Cannes. Megalopolis. Megalopolis. Yeah. Still doesn't have a uh, distributor yet, but maybe yeah. he'll get one there. Yeah. Oh my God, I feel sorry for that soul. Look, so that's like Roman. I know Roman. He's a really nice guy. And um, Sophia, of course. Sophia and, and um, Giancarlo. Yeah. Their three children. You should call up Francis and say you can show it at uh, Smod Castle Cinemas. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll do an exclusive run there in Highlands, New Jersey. He was like, "Do you know how much this movie cost?" <laughs> Every you, little bit you, helps, Francis. Do you know how much we have to make? I was like, what, what, did, "What did Avatar make at your theater?" I was like, "On opening Friday night, twelve people came, Francis. <laughs> twelve. <laughs> Pretty sweet deal, Francis." <laughs> I got to meet him once. You ever meet him? Never. I was working at K-Rock, the radio station at the time, and he had a film that he had self-financed that was releasing called Tetro. Do you remember this? With uh, Vincent Gallo in the lead. And he was taking all comers when it came to publicity. And so th they had their publicist reach out to the radio stations and say, if you send somebody to his house, he won't come to you, but he'll do a sit-down interview with whoever you send. And I was like, ooh, 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 me. <laughs> They're like, don't send him, that's scary. <laughs> so they sent me with a little tape recorder and two microphones, and I knock on the door in this house in the canyon, and um, I'm waiting for the assistant or the publicist or somebody to answer, and opens the door, and it's Francis Ford Coppola. And he welcomes me into the house, and he sits me down, and he says, do you want a cappuccino? And you're like, oh, 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 oh. I said, I'll take a cannoli if you got any in the back. Um, so I said, yeah, that sounds great. So I'm waiting for the assistant or the butler or somebody to come out. So he gets up and he goes into the kitchen. I hear, 
he's like, you whipping know, it whipping the foam up for the cappuccino. Comes out, sits down with me. Nobody else in the house. And we talked for about three hours. We used about 12 minutes on the radio. But it was one of the most fascinating. He was one of the kindest, most interesting conversations I've ever had with anybody. And Fuck boy, man. did he rave about his wife throughout our three hours together. Just couldn't say enough wonderful things about right? her. Yeah. So. That's really fucking beautiful. That's beautiful. I've, no, I've known you this many years. I've never knew that. Yeah. Why'd you only use 12 minutes on the radio? Because it, it's an alternative rock station, and they think, well, no, nobody listening to our station gives a fuck who Francis Ford Coppola is. Right. And this movie was not a big budget movie with a lot of names and stuff, so we just used bits and pieces of it for uh, the showbiz beat segment that I used to do. But there was a ton of it that I thought was really fascinating about his history and, and winemaking and you know just his life that I would have... I wish I had held on to that stuff. He sold, uh, I guess, his winery a lot to of make it this, to make a this big new portion one. to make this movie. Yeah, um, and which is like he's no stranger to. He did that uh, something similar back when he had American Zoetrope, right? He had yep. his own studio. Yeah, financed it, um, and she was there with him the whole way. Absolutely, a so. huge, uh, big bucket of win. That my that my heart aches for him. I can only imagine what he's going through right yeah. now. Yeah. And the kids too. Yeah. that's that's gotta hurt. And then O.J. Simpson died. <laughs> Did you do it? I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> that took you a long time. I went through the prostate. It was, you know, it's not the, it's not the easiest way to go. It's not the obvious way, right? right? right. It's yeah. true if you don't want to get caught. Yeah, the, the murderer is dead, so I, that's all we need when to say. When did this about happen? <laughs> this week. It happened this week. You didn't see the news? No. No. Yeah. You'd think they would have been all over the news, but I guess think. they didn't really cover it. <laughs> Worst part is Cato Kalin is is being t talked to again. That's what really bothered me. Are well, you kidding me? A lot of Cato Kalin interviews this week. I was like, oh, I, I I just forgot about him. Now I have to spend another five years forgetting about Cato Kalin. They call him up. He's like, what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> he wanted to come here tonight, but I said, no, we're sold out. <laughs> Hey there, boys and girls, it's your old podcast pal, Ralph, here. Why don't you check out The Ralph Report? That's my daily show. Monday through Friday, you can get an earful of me, and we have a pretty good time. Plus, if you're a Hollywood Babylon fan, and you subscribe at the three- or four-star general levels, you can get the entire back catalog of Hollywood Babylon, the past decade of Babylons, for you to listen to at your leisure. Plus, the four-star tier, they get to watch us record the show live once a week, Plus, there's uh, live stream events, all kinds of goodies. Why don't you go check it out? We're over there at Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the Ralph Report. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash the Ralph Report. Or check us out at the Ralph Report dot com. Sometimes stuff in movies, well, there are mistakes, there's flubs, there's boners. We call them shit that should not be. And now for shit we should not see Here's some shit that should not be This comes from Kyle Griffin in Ontario, Canada He writes, Ralph and Kev, but Jesus No, I'm good, thanks No, no come on Was that part of the game for Jay and Silent Bob? Smell the fingers? Yes. <laughs> that was a sequel to the spinoff game. Suck the finger. <laughs> Didn't sell nearly as well. Love the show. So glad you're back in front of a live audience. Thank you, Kyle. So are we. Found some shit that should not be in the film Rocky Balboa from 2006. Is that where he fights himself? Yes. <laughs> There's a mirror there. <laughs> what are you looking at? Are you a, you're a punk? No, this is where... Credits. <laughs> the most searing Rocky yet. This is where he fights Mason Dixon, the, the, the heavyweight champ. The whole champ. fucking line? <laughs> I'm fighting racism! <laughs> I'm sorry. Like Pennsylvania and Maryland! <laughs> Um, yeah, there was the wait, Mason Dixon. Yeah, he was what the heavyweight champ. Tommy Gunn or something. No, that's five. 
Wait, which one's this? This is Rocky Balboa. This is before Creed. Yes. This, this is the last one, where, one before Creed. Where we all thought he's going to die in this one. Right. And then he no. was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and then fucking Creed happened. And we're like, he's going to die, die in this, in this one. one. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and Creed 2 Two. happened. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, Still alive, Rocky. Yes. You can't stop him. Um, is he dead now? On the Creed no. Freight? Is it, do they no. say he's dead? No? No. He was just Adrian's on. dead. I know, yeah. yeah. She died Remember, a long time. I think she died in Rocky Balboa, no? Or she Creed. was dead by then, yeah, because yeah. he has the big uh, emotional conversation with a headstone. In this one, Where Rocky he tells Balboa. her that, like, he's afraid. And... Yeah, we did good, you know? We, like, raised him up, you know? It's like, nothing hit you harder than life, all right? It's going to hit you and knock you to your knees. And you get up, all right? And life's going to knock you down again. But you keep fighting, all right? Does he say that to the grave? Yeah. No, I almost, no, he says I that don't... to his kid. He says that to his kid. Oh, all right. Yeah. I thought he said it to the grave because I was like, I'm going home to watch that? <laughs> no, all right. And cry my fucking eyes out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> does he really scream at the grave? No. He what says does he to the say? Grave, he says, we do a good job, eh? Jimmy raised the kid right. You know, he's like a good kid, you know? You know, he's like... He like quit his job and he became a trainer and now he's he's a bum, but he's you know <laughs> we raised him good, you know. That's what I'm saying. Is it a long scene? No. Uh, no. He just puts a little folding chair there and talks to the <laughs> Yo Adrian <laughs> Here's a flower for your grave, right? It's pretty much it. <laughs> Can you do uh, him on the beach uh, yelling at her for Rocky Three? I forget the I forget the words. When he, he's here, I don't want to do it because I'm. Remember he explodes. I'm afraid, right? Oh come on, give it up! That was amazing. Thank you. Right? Thank you. That was a one-line direction right there. Thank I didn't even you. tell him which way to go with it. I just presented the line. I that was all the choice. Well, My favorite moment ever is when he's hitting the bag after he's retired in Rocky II and she's, he wants to come back and she doesn't want him to because she doesn't want him to get killed. Right. He's like, you know, I never asked you to stop being a woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm asking you, please, please, don't ask me to stop being a man. That was in two? Yeah. It's the 70s, you get away with that. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, in Rocky Balboa, one hour and 26 minutes into the film, uh, Rocky's trainer rushes into the ring to help separate the fighters, and Kyle believes this may be the first TKO ever for a trainer instead of a boxer. Let's take a look at this clip. As round two comes to a close, I mean a giant two the ring. Knocked down for the trainer. Didn't even get hit. Rocky's one of the fighters there? Yeah. The white one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the other guy's Mason Dixon. Mason Dixon, yeah. And so in this movie, he fights that guy? That's the fight? Yeah, it was happening right in front of your eyes. <laughs> they were the literally best? fighting. That's the, that's the big fight, though? Because like, he fights a couple times in these movies, right? <laughs> no. Starts with one fight. No, then... he's retired. He's an old retired man who comes out of retirement for this fight. And what is the... What's the like? You shouldn't do this, Rock. You'll die or something. Yeah, of course. That's the last five films in the series. They always say that to him. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. <laughs> Since Rocky you can't do one more punch. It's Rocky too. You're gonna die. Don't do it, Rock. You might die. I'm asking you, please, <laughs> please, don't ask me to stop being a man. Rocky two, Rocky three, Rocky, don't do it. You might die. I'm asking you, please. <laughs> Please let me get my face beat in again, right? <laughs> Rocky IV. I don't know. He's from Russia. Don't do it, you know? I'm asking you, please. <laughs> do svidaniya. <laughs> Nostrovia. <laughs> a man. Oh my, oh, my God. It's frighteningly easy to write a Rocky movie. It really is. <laughs> So wait, you can't do it, but you're doing it alone. <laughs> Somebody he, has to say he, that. He made so point. many of them without that guy. <laughs> I even. know. But wait, so four was the Russian, five was Tommy Gunn, and then six was Rocky Mason Balboa. Dixon. It's a whole fucking Marvel universe of those <laughs> movies, isn't there? There is. You should really do a multiverse where he fights himself <laughs> from each era. 
one by one. I'm asking you, please. No, I'm asking you, please. <laughs> Don't ask me stuff. I am asking you, stop being a man, all right? I want you to stop being a man. I asked you, please, already twice. And then fucking Beast from the X-Men is there. <laughs> I'm asking you, Beast. <laughs> beast. I don't understand him, Charles. <laughs> don't do it, Rocky. You'll end up in a wheelchair like me. <laughs> Professor <And> X, I don't... <laughs> Rock. Rocky's my real name. My code name is Italian Stars. <laughs> <sighs> Best show ever. <laughs> Brought to you by alcohol. <laughs> I guess you're right. Right? <laughs> that's the only thing that's different. Barkeep. <laughs> Another sidecar crumble or whatever the fuck it was called. <laughs> a Fliberty gibbet. What's it called? What was the one he got? A Fliberty gibbet. Ragamuffin. ragamuffin. Get him a ragamuffin. <laughs> that is the quintessential travel travel of a new drinker. From this is awful. Get, what the? Can I get another one of these, please? <laughs> That's the beginning of the journey. <laughs> Fair enough. While you're at it, get his old man another one, too. Yeah. Uh, also, we look at actors. Sometimes A-list actors can turn in less than A-list performances, but we have found that sometimes bad acting can go all the way around to become exquisite acting. To be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. All right. John Wimmer sent this one in. It's from Gore 2, Outlaw of Gore, from 1988. It's a, a, a lot of gore in that title. A lot title. of gore. G-O-R. Whole title's bookended by gore. <laughs> gore, apparently. Gore 2, Outlaw of Gore. <laughs> gore is a planet where a, uh, a young man from Earth gets transported to to become their hero. And this is the second in the gore franchise. Fair enough. I believe the last in the gore franchise. <laughs> Jack Palance is our actor today. You young share Jack Palance? The Jack Palance. Young, or is he play the old bad guy? Uh, old bad guy, yeah. Um, this is also a scene he shares with Donna Denton, an actress who just has like three credits on IMDb. Um, but she plays the queen. He is her advisor, and they're uh, at odds about what to do with this guy who has come to t destroy their evil empire. Come to fucking... Give Gore some shit. Yeah, he's gonna fuck Gore up. Yeah. This scene, I, I don't know who the exquisite actor is in, in the scene. Both of them are pretty awesome. Here it is. What did you offer him? Freedom, Your Highness. If he would only return to his own planet. Freedom? But he is my prisoner to be handled as I so wish. I know. And he will destroy us. Because you are behaving like a bitch in heat. <laughs> and not like a queen. Get out of here. Get out of here, you disgusting worm. Pleasure, your royal highness. Yes. Nailed it. She turned worm into a three-syllable word. Thank you. Worm. Worm. You disgusting worm. Yaw. Um, Royal. What, what year do you think that was? Highness. I know. 1988. All right, so then That's what? a year before Batman. Yeah. Wow. Are you sh You're my boy, Jack. Are you shitting me? Year before that. So that's yeah. like 10 years before he won an Oscar. Yeah. And did push-ups on the stage. Yes. That's why that I showed give it. everybody fucking hope. Right? Man. You know what I'm saying? Because that was at a place in his career where he's like, look at this shit. 
I'm saying these lines to this fucking broad. She just go acting worm like a bitch <laughs> in heat instead of a queen. And then he cuts to like ten years later. He's holding fucking tin. Yeah, you can never tell in this crazy business. Keep dreaming, kids. Yeah, we take That's nothing cool. else away from tonight's show, other and than she, you need more they, Hancock. And <laughs> she won a, an Emmy, I believe. No, 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 she did not. No, she married well and got out of the business. <laughs> Is that true? I have no idea. <laughs> That's my default I thought you just fucking story. did some deep research where you're like, you know, I fell down the rabbit hole. And her life turned out well. Every than model mine. actress, I assume, that's the end of their story. I do that from time to time. I'll be watching old shows, and I'm like, there's a guy who walks through the background. I'm like, that fucking dude, is he still alive? And he never had a line or anything like that. And you look deep in the credits and shit, and you're like, wow, he did nine things, and then stop. What hmm. happened? And then you start going off IMDb. <laughs> you're hiring a private detective. <laughs> Cops show up with their body cams on. Uh, Mr. Smith, we've had some complaints from an Alan Silverstein who yeah. used to be an actor says a, you've been harassing him. A lot of 80s sitcom background <laughs> acting. Yeah, I'm a fan. Why? Well, he says you're a little bit more than a fan, Mr. Smith. Stalker. He wanted to be in the business. Play Misty for me. That's a nice reach. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the entertainment world, shall we? And something we call the HBO Headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines. And give me head. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> I, I thought it was the other segment. I forget which one it was, but I was prepared for a completely different segment. Yeah. Oh, I think it was Ralph and Kevin. Keep her on your Ralph toes. Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin. That's Geek later. News? Geek yeah, News yeah. is later. Yeah. This is just the news news. News news. news news. Fair enough. Then, then we talk about Justin Bieber. Yes. Then we do Geek News. Yes. And then Liam Neeson's cock. Fuck. That's the rest oh of the Oh my God, show. we've seen a preview of what's going to happen. Yeah, really. Give it up for Ralph. So, Captain of the ship. Don't turn away. We'll be right back after this message. Well, if you're in control, then I can finish this. How come you got one? Why are they feeding the amateur tonight? <laughs> there it's gonna, you, you take a look at my rider in my contract. You're going to be hearing from my attorneys. <laughs> Jeez. It's all face. But you're doing your Stevie Wonder impression for a minute there. <laughs> Did we talk about this? Isn't she lovely? <laughs> I don't, I don't, Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> I don't know. That checks a lot of boxes. I, I don't know. Did you watch the... Uh, did we talk about the documentary about the greatest night in pop and shit like that? Yeah, We Are the World. Yeah. One of my favorite moments from that documentary. It's full of them. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. Great it's watch. about the making of the We Are the World. It's fantastic. But they talk about how Bob Dylan was all fucking like... Scared. Yeah, and he couldn't fucking spit it out. And they had a camera on him with a mic so you heard him and he wasn't really he was kind of mumbling which he you know that's his thing but he was really over mumbling and just kind of like better day you me just not really into it and they were like this guy's an icon we and he's fucking all about social justice we gotta fucking pull him out so they say in the documentary like stevie wonder is an amazing mimic so stevie went over and did bob dylan taught him how to bob dylan dylan's up. face yeah so Stevie Wonder sits down with Bob Dylan at the piano and he's just like, Bob, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And Bob's like, thanks, Stevie. And then fucking... Did Bob Dylan have a stroke at this yeah. point in his career? Yeah. <laughs> and then he sang his bass. Do you make a better day? Do you me? But because Stevie Wonder is a perfect mimic. Yes. Which I, captured my imagination because at first I was like, why? And Because it's the about, second perfect mimic you know. Is that why? <laughs> yes. Wow, you turned on me fast. Jeez. And the only thing separating you guys is sight. That's why he's a perfect mimic ah. because his whole life he's heard the world, not seen it. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> Finally. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, yes, he's, fucking... he's taken everything in through his ears, so he must be super attuned to the music and people's voices. That means, like, if you spend, like, fucking two minutes with Stevie Wonder, he could do you. Yeah, he could. <laughs> like, to your face. Yeah, he could. That'd be amazing. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Talk about part-time lover. <laughs> Color ring once hang it, the pen. Okay. <laughs> oh, you could fucking do this. <laughs> I fucking throw a few lyrics I'm out. I'm just thinking we're at song heavy tonight. It just feels song heavy. Fair enough. Yeah. This is the fucking off Broadway edition. <laughs> um, did we do the intro for headlines? We did that, right? We yeah. did. Okay. Yeah. It goes Ralph and Gibbon, it Ralph and No, Kevin. that's a different segment. <laughs> The Golden Bachelor and his wife have divorced. Uh, but they seem so sound. Didn't they just meet? They on a said show? it wouldn't last. <laughs> yeah. And they were right. Golden. Three months after their marriage, they have decided to uh, end their marriage. Wasn't he with a lady from New Jersey or something like that? Um, I think she was from my I neck believe of the woods. she was, yes. Yeah. He was from um, fucking Idaho or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but they got married in a televised special on January 4th, and now they've already called it quits. So, uh, Do you think they got married because, like, you know, the show? They got money. No. You think they got money to get married? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not the most pessimistic person in the world, but I would have to imagine. I wondered if it was just the pressure of the situation, where they keep telling you, you're going to find the one for you, and then you meet a girl you kind of like, and you feel almost obligated. The pressure the is the pressure of all the money in your hand. <laughs> when they're like, just fucking get married so we have a season finale. You can get divorced three months later. Golden Bachelor, by the way, reached 43.4 million viewers on ABC and Hulu during its run. It was one of the most successful Bachelors of all time. And now old men everywhere are taking their own lives because they realize they're going to be alone forever. No, well, the good news is they can do season two. He's free. Uh, they're, they're doing the Golden Bachelorette next. Oh, is that right? And then the Golden Shower. Oh, yeah. The hottest. That's the season I'm waiting yeah. for. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and here's your hose. Do you accept this hose? <laughs> the golden shower. Uh, CBS has announced they are renewing all three FBI TV series for additional seasons. President of the FBI TV fan club said, there are three FBI series on <laughs> CBS? Is this a, a fictional show or a real? It's fictional, yes. Dramatized. Dick Wolf. These are Dick Wolf productions. Oh, my God. There's FBI, FBI Most Wanted, and FBI International. This Which sounds the, against the law, if you ask me. This is the, against the law. I think so. I think the FBI has to stay within the United States. Um, this guy, man, is just the franchise king. Like, Dick Wolf, I looked it up when I saw this story. He has nine TV series currently running right now yeah. as we sit here. He has a new one on Netflix that I watch. It was like crime in New York City. And he, like, instead of fictionalizing it, he's like, oh, you know what's great TV? Sit down with any New York detective, put a camera on him, and talk about, like, their old cases. Genius. It's fantastic. Every one of them is just a joy to listen to because, like, this fucking guy, sorry for, but, but this fucking guy. And... <laughs> We would air on a fucking 827, this fucking guy. And it's so, like, like fuck, like, making up dialogue. Just fucking let those guys talk. It was pretty fascinating. But now he's moved into documentaries as well. Genius. He had Law & Order. He had all the Chicago shows. There were, like, nine Law & Orders. There's, like, 19 Chicago shows. And he's got fucking three FBI's. FBI shows. I looked him up, like, to see if he must be a billionaire. He's oh, close. Gotta be. Close. Yeah. The Year of Dick, that's right. Uh, LeVar Burton's got a new gig. He is officially the host of Trivial Pursuit, the TV show. 90s are coming back, Kev. Things are looking good. I like Trivial Pursuit. What was the thing everyone wanted him to host? Uh, Jeopardy, initially. And why didn't that happen? Black. <laughs> right? Right? Is that what it was? No, but... I mean, he is black. I mean, there's no denying that. Who's the host now? 
Uh, um, one Ken of the Jones. winners, one of the former winners. It's got the personality of a cue card. <laughs> and then Maya Bialik was also she one was of also the uh, co-hosts. She left, I believe. But she's gone, yeah. They gave her the boot. Well, this is, seems like a consolation. Jewish. Because she was Jewish. <laughs> this seems like a fine consolation No, it's perfect. Prize. And he'd be a great host, and they should have hired him for bet for uh, Jeopardy. And yeah. now he's going to be on the Trivia Pursuit, which will air on the CW, sadly, so no one will see it. That's the new CW, right? Yeah, the new one. The one the no new one CW. Watches. All your heroes are dead. <laughs> but we've got Jordy LaForge <laughs> and Matt giving Locke. you slices of pie. Curb Your Enthusiasm is over. They just aired the finale last weekend, and uh, HBO is thrilled that it pulled in a 1.1 million viewers. That's the difference between cable and network television. Golden Bachelor pulled in 43 million viewers. Curb Your Enthusiasm pulled in 1.1 million viewers, and HBO sent out a press release celebrating. With a low bar like that, why are I not in television? Right? Yeah. You can get 1.1 million viewers on one of your Instagram posts. I remember we had, when we did the Clerks cartoon, they were like, we're canceling this. And I was like, why? Because they're like, only 7 million people watched. Now I was like, that's time. more than fucking anybody that I've ever met. And they were like... <laughs> They're like, what does that mean? <laughs> the metric means nothing to us. <laughs> I don't even know seven million people. <laughs> you people are crazy. <laughs> and they're like, can you please leave the office, Mr. Smith? <laughs> They've been talking about that shit for months. <laughs> so, and so, Smith so you know, here, right? So we told him the show was watched by 7 million people. Do you know what his response was? He said, I don't even know 7 million people. show ever <laughs> you know what we gotta do from now on just cut it off at 150 <laughs> and drink never be sold out always drink and fucking yeah. that's when the magic happens we're reinventing the show tonight kids <laughs> yeah welcome to the new Babylon <laughs> it's gonna be like a boutique show <laughs> yes i start doing it in people's homes. This is that fucking goop vagina egg of Babylon shows. Uh, speaking of Curb Enthusiasm, everyone is talking about Did you watch the last season? Are you a Curb fan? Did you watch it all? No. No. Everyone's talking about the highlight of the season was the performance of Bruce Springsteen as an improv comedian. Everyone was shocked by how good he was. I'm, I, I'm knowing this now, I'll go look for that clip. You should watch that episode. He, he's in the whole episode. And he's brilliant. The whole episode. Yeah. Um, this is. I, I don't doubt that he's entertaining as fuck because I saw him at that Broadway show, the one they did on Netflix. But I saw it live. Like right. I went to the fucking show. And I was so close, I could have thrown a rolled up tissue at him and shattered his vertebrae. That's how fucking close I was. So, what I, was in your tissue? <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking steel. But regardless, <laughs> point is, I was real fucking close. And as, as great as it was to hear him like do songs and stuff, because um, of course he's amazing at what he does for a living, I was blown away by his banter. Mm. He was he's such a storyteller. Just like, and I sat there going, who knew? And then you realize this guy's been fucking on stage for 50 years. You don't think he fucking picked up how to deal with a crowd? Oh, yeah. And it's more than with just a guitar. Like, he fucking stops playing and he, he fucking holds you in the palm of his hand, storytelling. He's funny as fuck. So I walked away from that show like super impressed by that guy. I don't doubt that he was funny on that episode. I'm gonna go out and check that out. Here's a little clip from his episode. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh fuck. This is um. This is. A, check it out right now. This is a scene where his his manager Ken. Yeah. Is a, a trans man who used to be a woman named Kendra, who Larry David used to have sex with back in the Seinfeld days, and so Larry David is kind of is kind of awkward around Ken now. The fact that he is uh, transitioned and Bruce sees a lot of humor in it. Okay. Small world, Larry. You and Ken sleeping together? No, no, no. 
I slept with Kendra, not Ken. Kendra is Ken. Kendra is not Ken. No, Kendra's Ken. Kendra's not Ken. Kendra's Ken. I am Ken. You had sex with me. Ken is Kendra. Kendra's Ken. Ken is Ken. Kendra is Kendra. And never the twain shall meet. Oh, we've met. I'm Ken, and we banged it out. <laughs> Larry ends up giving him COVID, and he misses his farewell tour, and it's, it's a very funny episode. Check the whole fucking thing. Yeah, check it out. Speaking of the boss, Jeremy Allen White. Do you watch, do you watch the, uh, the Bear over yeah. on FX? Oh, is he the lead guy? He's playing Springsteen in a new movie about Springsteen recording the Nebraska album in 1982. Are you shitting me? Yeah. Who's making this movie? Uh, 20th Century Fox. Wow. Yeah. What's it called? It's called Deliver Me From Nowhere, and it is based on Bruce Springsteen uh, having to deal with the fact that he's a global superstar now all of a sudden, so he writes and, and records the most raw, dark album of his career called Nebraska, and it's just about that period of his life, mm -hmm. which I think will make no money, but I will love watching it. I'll check that out. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would prefer, well, if you were going to, they're going to pick an era of his life, or they could do like the whole fucking thing, or, but, or if they were going to laser focus I on I would prefer a biopic, but he's still... Cradle to the Grave, yeah. or Cradle to the Present, rather. Yeah, I'd like to see him coming up in Asbury Park and meeting, oh. meeting the big man, Clarence, and doing all that stuff. I want to see the origin oh. story of the E Street Band, you know. It's all right, so let, like, let's just take it to there. Let's take it to the right before they release fucking Thunder Road or something. They're like, I hope this works, credits. <laughs> I'm in. You like my movie? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, let's, who's making that fuck? 20th Century Fox? Let's call them up call and get some up. of that money, man. Yeah. You guys got it all wrong. You're, doing, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Me and Jay um, have been, uh, got added to the cast of a sitcom, and I'm not at liberty to say what sitcom it is, but we've done like three episodes. We've been having a blast and shit. But Jay, you want to talk about fucking, like, privilege. Jay goes, um, fuck, we should have a fucking sitcom. And I was like, well, we are in a sitcom. He goes, no, we should have our own. Make one. <laughs> and I was like, do you seriously think that's how it happens? And he's like, yeah, you always want to do stuff, and we do it. And I was like, yeah, but if I could have done a sitcom, I would have done it a long time ago. He goes, well, why didn't you do it? I was like, I, I don't think I could do a sitcom. He's like, I believe in you. <laughs> And so I wrote a sitcom See? just to fucking show him. It like, does work that way in his world. I guess it does kind of make sense. Yeah. Um, being on a sitcom, though, like, uh, and, and acting, like, has been fun because, you know, I fucking never get to act as Silent Bob except with my face and shit. Right. But now they give me words. Oh, look out. I, <laughs> oh, boy. I chew the fucking scenery. They have unleashed shit. the beast. Oh, I go, I go huge, son. I go big. And the director um, for the last two episodes has come over to me like after the first take of everything and shit where I'm like, bah! Comes over and she's like, um, I want to ground your character <laughs> a little just bit a more. Little bit. Which is a really nice way, if you don't know director speak, it's a really nice way of saying like, you are so fucking big yeah. and unbelievable. You're giving me a 10 yeah. and I need a 7. Yeah. I don't, I don't quite have the art form down yet but because in my head... Like, I don't know what it looks like, right? I just know what I'm seeing in my head, and I've watched sitcoms my whole life, so I'm like, I'm going to be big! You know? <laughs> and they're like, sitcoms aren't always like that, dude. You can, you can bring it down to like a fucking three. <laughs> but that don't feel right. It don't feel right to be on a sitcom set with this live studio audience and not be like, oh my God, not! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Are you swallowing the microphone <laughs> while they're recording? Yes. Is that the problem? If they give me one, I'd be like... <laughs> But it's been fucking fun, man. Well, like, talk about fucking privilege. That guy's like, just write one. We'll do it. I was like, that was, we couldn't even, we didn't have that kind of juice like during fucking the 90s. You think we got that now? We're you just need 1.1 million people, apparently. <laughs> According to HBO, that's all you need to have a show. And I bet you we, we could probably get Bruce Springsteen because we're from sure, Jersey. Right. Shit. Yeah, Kevin, I like to do it and all, but, uh, you know, I have taste. <laughs> I'm just saying something he might say. Just I, I don't even, I'm not even hurt by that. I'm just shocked that you picked tonight to debut your Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, impression number 11. Yeah, Mr. Ralph to the Barnes. list. The list grows. I used to do a bit on the radio where Bruce Springsteen would do his banter on stage. 
Let's hear it. They would play just the keyboard riff to my hometown over and over again. Because I've seen about a dozen Springsteen concerts in my life. Growing talks. up in Philly, he was a god just like he was to folks in Jersey. And I used to mock his, his banter because in between songs, sometimes he would go on a little bit. And I'd be like, you know, you're going to do three hours anyway, Bruce. Can we move this along a little bit? Right. But invariably, I thought it would be hilarious if he started just to like confess to crimes and things. <laughs> so <laughs> the organ would start, I'm like, I was walking down the boardwalk one night and, <laughs> and I saw him feeling pretty bad about myself, you know. I didn't have much money and the, the band wasn't really coming together yet. And then I saw a guy walking the other way and he had no shoes, but he had a really nice coat, so I hit him in the head with a trash can. And, and I took that coat because it was cold that night. The wind was whipping down the boardwalk. And, you know, then I had a dead bum on my hands. And so I called Clarence, and he came down, and we cut him up and buried him under the boardwalk. So tonight, I want to celebrate the fact that the Statue of Limitations is finally up on that crime. The song I call My Hometown. And then I would just go <laughs> That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about this guy in entertainment news. Uh, the Atlanta-based casting company that got all the extras for Tulsa King, the Sylvester Stallone series. Have you watched that? I have not watched that yet, no. And yet I've watched the Stallone family reality show. I was going to say, like, you watch that, you don't watch this? Yeah. Uh, they quit. They, they uh, canceled their deal with the production company because apparently Stallone was making fun of the extras, calling them ugly, tub of lard, and fat guy with cane. <laughs> to like, which the fat guy with cane said, that hurt my soul. That's his actual quote. Poor fat guy with those, cane. Those weren't character names? He was No, these were the people he was describing in the crowd. <laughs> Yo, it was like the fat guy with cane back there, right? Can we get rid of him, please? I'm asking you, please, please, don't ask me to act with fat guy with cane, right? <laughs> the tub of lard, all right? <laughs> hey, you ugly tub of lard. You're in the background, like, everyone's looking at you because you're a tub of lard, all right? So uh, they got complaints, and so the casting company said, that's it, we're not working with them anymore, we're walking away. So the complaints came from the extras. Yeah, from the background. Was insulting. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. As if their lives aren't hard enough, uh, background folks on a, on a set. Stallone apparently also suggested production, bring pretty young girls to be around me, he said. I'm asking you, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Put pretty young girls on my cock, all right? <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Justin Bieber's in the news. What do you know? Why? Justin Bieber. Nobody fucking needs ya. You want know why? I'll tell me why. Cause you're a little cock. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. That was fantastic. That was the best one ever. My man was like, Cause you're a little cunt! Go yeah. Fucking A, man. Amen. I felt that in my soul. I have no opinion on Justin Bieber, but you just swayed me. I was like, he is one. A new survey reveals this week that Justin Bieber is no longer the world's most popular Canadian. He had been? He had been the world's most popular Canadian. Who is it now? Uh, I'm going to give you the top 10 according to a new poll from 2024. At number 10, Justin Trudeau. Prime Minister. Prime Makes Minister. Sense. PMA. Number, number 10. Nepo not, baby. Not, not great for him, but still yeah. he's in the top 10. Yeah. Number 9, Rachel McAdams. Lovely and talented actress Rachel McAdams. Yeah, man. Notebook, fucking Mean Girls. Number 8, Sonny Leone. Porn star, Sonny Leone. Wow. Canadian porn star, Sonny Leone, who, uh, of course, exploded on the scene, no pun intended, 
in her role of Toluca Lake in Busty Cops. Her character name was Toluca Lake. I love that. Cute. Uh, then, of course, she followed up with Alabama Jones and the Busty Crusade. And then, of course, her, uh, her, her masterpiece, Shut Up and Fuck Me. There was a... <laughs> oh, my God. Right to the point. Yeah. Best title ever, if you're looking for her work. Uh, number seven, Suddenly Drake. Long. Drake at number seven. Do you think Drake's like, I'm only one slot above a porn star? Uh, fucking Drake. Number six, Jim Carrey at number six. Number five, The Weeknd at number five. Or, he's Canadian? Or Weekend, Weekend as I call him. I had no idea he was Canadian. He is. Number four, Ryan Gosling. People forget that he's a Canuck. I don't forget he's a Canuck. I think he's one of the greatest Canadians. I thought this was odd. At number three, Bill Spaceman Lee. He was a popular pitcher from the Montreal Expos years ago. He's number three on the list. Unless this survey was given by Bill Spaceman Lee. <laughs> Unless he was showing up at people's front doors asking who they liked. I can't imagine why he's number three. Are you sure it's not Bill Spachemin? <laughs> it could be. Perhaps it is. Uh, number two now, Justin Bieber. He's fallen to number two. Oh, but he's still on the list. Oh, yeah. He's just not the most popular Canadian. He's not number one anymore. Amen. Who is? Any guesses at the number one? <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Yes, of course. Deadpool. Deadpool himself at number one. They Re showed uh, some of that footage, man. It, they did. We should talk about that in the Geek News. Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin. CinemaCon happened happened this weekend or this week, right? It did. You didn't go this year, huh? I did not. I didn't go last year either. I've never gone. You're an exhibitor? I am. I own a movie theater, uh, but I've not gone to CinemaCon. You could have seen all this cool ahead of the screen You know what stuff. they do at CinemaCon? They're like, this is the state of cinemas today. I know the state of cinemas today. They're in the fucking toilet. <laughs> but you get to see all the cool early footage stuff. Yeah, that's what the internet's for. <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine showed nine-minute clip of uh, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Which is great, but, like, why not 20? <laughs> you not greedy bastard. Yeah, why not? Uh, uh, but that sounds awesome, and the footage sounded fantastic. Yeah, uh, they showed a lot of clips, including Ryan saying into the camera, Suck it, Fox, I'm going to Disneyland, get fucked, which I like a lot. <laughs> Him screaming at other cast members saying, we can't say cocaine. It's the only thing Feige said was off limits. <laughs> this, this movie's going to be meta as fuck. Yeah. They're really going to do a deep dive. I heard Kevin it. Feige was cursing on stage. Yeah, he said, it's gonna be, this movie's fucking great. And I could say fucking because it's an R-rated film. Oh, look at, look at him, he's man. A, he's a big boy now. You know he wanted to say fucking during Endgame. Like, I'm a fucking genius. Yeah. They showed footage from Captain America, Brave New World as well, featuring our new Cap, Sam Wilson. Which they said has a very uh, Winter Soldier spy espionage. Very grounded, very realistic, yeah. especially because it concerns uh, an assassination plot against the, the President of the United States, Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, now played by Harrison Ford in this film. What will that sound like? Um... <laughs> Captain America. I'm going to go. Twing, twing. He's going. Stop it, old man. He supposedly uh, goes Red Hulk in this movie. Have you read That's that? what they say. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm Red Hulk and I'm really angry. Uh, Did you see him at the tribute to Jimmy Buffett this past weekend? No. They had a, at the Hollywood Bowl, they did a tribute to late Jimmy Buffett, and it was star studded. Paul McCartney was there, and the Eagles were there, and just the, the entire concert stage was filled with luminaries, actors, and, and musicians. And they had Harrison Ford say something. And I was like, why? <laughs> and he got up to the mic and said, um, Jimmy Buffett was a really cool guy. 
That's why I got my ear pierced. <laughs> Great story, Harrison. That Thanks so it? much for stopping by. Yeah. Great stuff. They're bringing back Heroes. Remember Heroes? Yeah. <laughs> Tim Kring. Tim Kring show. Save the cheerleader, save the world. Save the world. It came at a time when, before the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Because they were doing kind of bastardized versions of Marvel stories, and I remember being fucking thrilled because I'm like, oh my God, they're doing a version of Days of Future Past and right, stuff. Right, right. And then eventually we got all that. Yes. Um, and he's been trying to bring it back ever since. Yeah, there was another incarnation not too many years Heroes ago. Heroes Reborn in 2015 right. that came and went, and now Heroes Eclipsed is the newest version where we get to see brand new set of mutants. Well... It, it, we don't get to see it. He's shopping. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so we there's may a, not get to see it. There's a good it. chance somebody will be like, well, we have other things now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, it's all I can write. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for him. He loves this product, obviously. It's, it's a smart play to actually take it back into the marketplace because, you know, it'll go to NBC first where it was. And it's right. not like NBC Universal has its own superheroes, right? Hulu, maybe? Yeah. It, it could work. I mean, there's still... I wish him well. Just so I want yeah. Greg Grunberg to come back and play totally. that character. And also, like, remember, like, I, I, that place holds a special... Uh, that show holds a special place in my heart because it was carrying the flag at a time where nobody else was, was comic book It's all we had superhero-wise. And there was comic book graphics in it. Remember the one guy painted and stuff like yeah. that? Save the cheerleader, save the world. Yeah, that shit was fucking tight. I loved man. it. Yeah. All right, before we go home, boys and girls, we got one last bit of business. We got to talk about the size of Liam Neeson's cock. Yeah. Oh, we can't help but wonder how big is Liam Neeson's cock. Wie groß ist im Liam Neeson's penis? That's right. Every week, folks, email us at hbopodcast at aol.com. If you want to send Do us... Do that any... until David Zoslav takes it away from us. <laughs> That's right. If you want to send us anything for any of the segments, please send it my way at hbopodcast at aol.com. Every week, folks, send in interesting facts about Liam Neeson's cock. As you know, he is the largest penis in Hollywood. Here are this week's facts. Liam Neeson's cock is so big... How big? The nicknames for his balls are Godzilla X Kong. <laughs> Movie made a lot of money. Yeah, it's made huge, a lot of money. Huge, not as big as his balls. Though. That's not big as all. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? The U.S. government has approved $55 million for a bullet train from the tip to his balls. <laughs> it's a long trip. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta speed that up somehow. Thank God they're gonna cut down that time. That's right. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's now taking Ozempic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite one this week, I have to admit. Just trying to lose some LBs <laughs> in the cock region. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big? It broke up the Golden Bachelor's marriage. <laughs> and lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? This week, he had an erection that blotted out the sun. Oh, ladies and gentlemen of Burbank, have you had a good time this evening? Thank you for being the chosen ones. We cannot thank you enough for coming, but there is no show without the man sitting on my left. Give it up for Ralph fucking Garman. Let's hear it for my bestest buddy and babble brother, Mr. Kevin Smith. Give it up for Dr. Josh Roush. And that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck off. Good night, Burbank. Give it up for Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. <laughs>